fire this up and we'll attach the, the manual white wire so let me get good contact and I'm gonna hold it hold it while I'm doing this and we're gonna see the fan roar and everything so let's find out what the sucker can do it's all attached now you can see here in these leads it's going to as appropriate I want to make sure oh, make sure this doesn't touch the white wire okay so let me see okay so you can see here this is it let's fire up the scooter I'm gonna fire it up and just turn it on and we're gonna find out right now if this how this thing works I still have my white wire in my hand though it's not making contact to this other white wire I could try to do this way but that's nah, okay let's try it just with the red wire first and let's see what it does okay so here we go fire it up brake lever I'm not seeing any light are you I'm not seeing anything lighting okay so let me go ahead and tap this white wire let's see what happens whoa look at that huge bright super bright okay here we go almost blindingly bright all right all four okay now that's yo you know why is because i didn't have my high beam on so let me go and toggle the high beam on right now i'm gonna turn it on there you go see it's still bright the high beam's on and i have my white led lid off uh, the fan hasn't kicked in yet oh yeah the fan is working see the fan here i don't know if you can see it spinning i don't know if i can see it spinning it's a bright light i think it's spinning But anyway, this thing is super bright. Oh man, it's, it's blind light. All right, now that's awesome. That's good to know. Okay, let's go ahead and kill the switch. Oh my gosh, this thing is bright. Now look at this. Just with my ignition on, my driving light should work if I put the low beam on here. This is low beam slash AKA driving light, okay? So the white one should work if I just have this tapped and the battery's turned on. The battery's turned on. But you know what? It needs a little bit more power probably. So yeah, the, I guess the driving light doesn't work even with the battery turned on due to the fact of this. So let's turn it on again and let's see how bright this sucker is. Okay. There we go. All right, so now right now my high, oh, is my high beam turned on? No. Oh, my high beam was turned on, that's probably why. Okay, let me go and turn off the, let me turn off the scooter. It just put the ignition key in the on position only, but without turning it on. Okay, my high beam was on, so that's why it probably said, look, you know, you want high beam, but unfortunately we can only give you low beam. If we can't give you low beam because you have your high beam toggled, uh, switch or turned on, then we're not gonna give it to you. So let's see if the driving lights come on. Okay, so it still doesn't come on without the engine being turned on. So this thing needs a lot of power perhaps. That's why the engine needs to crank over a certain voltage. Okay, let me see if I can even swap it. I'm gonna take the red lead off for a second. I'm just gonna put it in here. Nope, same thing, same thing. Okay, so let's go and put this one back on. So regardless of the fact, all right, let's go and see, one, two, three. All right, so let's go and see here. We're gonna put this white one on. Super bright, or was. Not sure not what happened there. Touching each other. Okay, there we go. They didn't make good contact, huh? Very, very bright. Okay, now let's go ahead. I'm gonna go and toggle my high beam. Oh wow, look at that. I don't even have to put my white one again. I forgot about that. See? That's my high beam right there. Let me go back onto the on position only. Turn it off. I mean just go back on the on position while starting the scooter. Maybe I didn't make a good contact originally. Let's see if I can make a good contact. Yeah, still, if I'm making, oh shoot, I'm getting close to the ground there. Yeah, I'm making good contact, but it's still not coming on. So this one definitely needs engine on either in uh, high beam or in low beam. So let me go ahead and try to see if I can uh, touch this wire here, like permanently. That way I can actually show you what the toggle is like for high beam and low beam. So let me go ahead and engine's off. Make sure. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to squeeze in the insulator. There we go. All right, so squeeze in the insulator, right? And now let's go and check this out. Uh, high beam is off, everything's off. Now the engine's gonna be started, okay? Here we go, one, two. Let's look at the fan. I guess this is the fan was not spinning. I'm gonna turn this way, this way, that way you can see if it starts. I can't even see the fan myself. So there is a black fan with a black housing, so that's why I kind of look. There you can see a little fin there. Let's see if that one spins, okay? See, I don't even see it spinning yet. Okay, so, right now, 
right now I have it plugged in and the engine's turned on, but I'm not sure why it's not cranking away. So let me go and turn on the high beam. Okay, okay, I can do first. There you go. It's kind of weird, it's like intermittent. We might have to make sure we have a good connection. That's probably what it is. Okay, I turn it off. High beam. Off. I think the high beam actually makes... Okay, so the high beam, what it does is, you can see here, there's two of them that lights up during the normal drive. Oh, I can feel the fan now kick in. And you can probably see the fan spinning now. See here. Yeah, this does get pretty hot. Not that hot, but it's getting there. You can see the fan. It's gone, the fin. It's spinning actually right now. Very straight to the back. See that? Okay, so you can see here, see one side's not lighting up until I actually toggle the high beam, right? So you got two sides that lights up and one side it doesn't. So now we're gonna go ahead and toggle the high beam so you can see it. See that? That lights up. So I got see that first. Now I'm gonna keep the high beam on. Now all three lights up. So this is what you're getting here for $25. This is a badass bulb. Wow. That is bright. And then the fan's working too. The fan kicks in, I guess, at its own time. After the bulb's been started a while. Okay, let me go and turn this off. Let me go and turn this off and do a heat touching test. See how hot this really gets. Oh yeah, it's it's actually pretty warm, wow. Yeah, it looked like it could melt its own plastic housing, but I guess these are special plastic housing. So weird. Yeah, it does feel really warm. Uh, this is not burn mark. This was already there. So you can see here. Yeah, it's 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 a really done product. Let's see if this gets hot. No, this doesn't get hot at all. The little little adapter here for his, uh, your current stabilizer doesn't get hot at all. So let's check out the other ones here. All right, let's look for the Hikaru one. Hopefully that one doesn't blow my hand off. So let's we'll find out. Okay, here we go. I should just leave this on here because we just switched the bottom part. All right, so let's go and get the Hikaru one. And let's see how that bad boy does. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> this is fun. I like uh, playing with electricity. Don't do it in a certain high voltage. 12 volts won't kill you, but any other ones will. So I caution you from doing what I'm doing. You might get a shock out of it. Okay, so I'm bringing the Hikira one here. Again, just to recap about this one again. Uh, this one, you know, it comes with its own little socket here. Where you can change these adapter so different sizes you want to fit your uh you know your your um what you call that your front housing here of your driving lights so it depends you know you're fit, trying to fit it here right there the front housing of your driving lights so right there so yeah it'll curve there's a little notch there these two on the sides and hopefully it'll fit it so let's try the other one here we're gonna go after. Okay, now again, but with this one again, it comes with a spring. These are all that's included in there. I guess the spring put a little bit of force or tension here, so you can when you mount it, it'll stay in place. It'll back up the bulb or something like that. But I don't think in this scenario we need it. It comes with two more different adapters. You have to unscrew them. When you unscrew it, you can put this adapter in there. Different ones. You can see where the screw holes are for you to actually either just one side where the screws are. The other side is blank still. Uh, you could use another screw actually. They do give you two, uh, another piece of uh, screw. I believe they do. No, they don't. So that's it. That's one screw here. You can decide which side you can mount it on. And then there's a hole. There's an adapter here. This is one other adapter here. And then you have your H4 adapter like that. And it has the screw holes too somewhere. Or sh okay, this one only has one. I don't know why the other one needs two. See, your H4 adapter. So this actually includes it with this $25 kit, which is pretty a good deal there. I think it was even lesser. I think it might be in 20 so let's go ahead and check out the other ones. Now the Hikara ones, its adapter, its current stabilizer, actually detaches this off. You can see here, this Hikara one. Okay, and then this is the current stabilizer here. There you go. It comes with almost like a multiple pins here. Now these three pins, it's going to puzzle me a little bit because it's not color coded. And it's usually designed to wire for like a motorcycle or a car for that matter. So I'm going to try to see if we can use it. This also feels heavy duty. I hope this is not so dangerous, but we'll find out. I'm going to go and put this attached to here. The worst can do it amplifies 12 volts. Okay, this one kind of only goes a certain way. So let's see if this will snap. It also has a little rubber water seal here, so it's pretty cool. Okay, so you can see how it lines up here. Let me get a closer view. Or make sure you get the resin. You can see here, 
the pinholes are located in the bottom and these pins hole right here you can see one side is lower so where the pinhole is lowered you want to make sure you line it up there fortunately it doesn't tell you which one's top or bottom so there you go that one snapped in and now the fun part uh making sure i got the right ground okay so here we go i'm gonna try to attach this one i'm gonna decide uh which one uh the ground one i assume is gonna be the the, the middle one here right and then i'm gonna go ahead and put the black uh one of the red ones here i guess we can feed uh, remember again just ignore this is not positive or negative here ground wire high and low okay and then i'm gonna have to touch one of them in fact, I really don't want to touch it. I want to just stay back and turn it on and see what happens. So you can actually see as well as I am the effects of it. So I'm going to make sure they're not touching each other before I actually... See, I can't really put that in there, but maybe I can... Maybe get a clamp or something. I wish I had another clamp on me. Uh, let's see here what I could do. Find a clamp, find a clamp, maybe a paper clip or something to make contact to hold in place. So I think I might be able to get some kind of clip or something on there. There we go. I'm using one of those, um, what do you call that? The thing that holds your plastic. This will help hold in place right here. You know, your plastic uh, housing screw, uh, I don't know what you call them, shields, to be able to put your plastic on and make sure it doesn't, you know, fall loose. So we'll use that one to hold one of the other wires. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let me get the adapter. It's gonna be pretty tricky. Maybe I can switch this one and use this one for the two side because that way I can isolate the center one here. If I isolate the center one, it'll be better. I just have to move. I believe ground is in the center. 